Suppose that the velocity of some moving object is given by the function v is equal to t squared. And we need to calculate the approx the, well we need to approximate the displacement of this object on the interval from 0 to 2 seconds. That displacement is going to be the area under the velocity curve. So what I've got here on this graph is the graph of y equal x squared. And we're interested in this on the interval from 0 to 2. So let me kind of block off the interval that we're considering. Okay, so we're talking about calculating the area trapped between our parabola and the x-axis. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide this interval from 0 to 2 up into two subintervals of equal length. So one subinterval is going to be from 0 to 1, Oops. and the other subinterval would be from 1 to 2. If I decide to use the right endpoint for each subinterval sub to get a velocity, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate um, v of 1, okay, which is going to be this height, and I'm going to evaluate v of 2 which is going to be this height. So what I've done is I've said, all right, I'm going to choose a sample point for the first subinterval. The notation for that would be x sub 1 with a bar, so x bar sub 1. And I'm saying that's the right end point, so that's on the interval from 0 to 1, that's 1. The second sample point would be x2 bar is 2. Okay, the right end point of the interval from 1 to 2. I'm going to evaluate velocity at v of 1, right, which we know would be 1 squared or 1, and I'm going to allow that value to, to determine the height of our rectangle. So the rectangle I'm considering then for approximating the area under the curve for this first subinterval would be this one. The area of that rectangle can be found by taking v of 1 and multiplying by the width of that subinterval. Okay, now the width of that subinterval delta x, or actually it would be delta t if I stick with. the correct variable in that problem, and the, you know, we can see that from 0 to 1, that width is 1. So the area of that rectangle that I've kind of badly shaded there in green is V of sample point X sub 1, and I should have been using a T for all of those. That's a T, that's a T, that's a T, I'll go back and fix that. Still a sample point, so it would be t1 bar, t sub 1 bar, okay, and we're multiplying that by the width of that interval, delta t. So for the second subinterval, the sample point I'm choosing to use is the right end point, so that would be t bar sub 2. Then I'm evaluating the velocity at 2, which we know is going to be 4. And change that back to the dotted line I need. There we go. And so I'm calculating 
the area of this rectangle which would be V T sub 2 bar the velocity at that sample point times the width of that sub interval so we're looking at V of 2 times 1. So then to estimate the total displacement for the objects moving with this velocity it'll be the sum of the two areas of these rectangles. So if I add V sub 1 oh come on Ben, right times 1 plus V sub 2 times 1 then I'm going to have 1 times 1 for the first area 4 times 1 for the second area so 5 is the approximate displacement of, the, of this particular object on the interval from 0 to 2 seconds now, we can see from our picture that this estimate is really not going to be very good because we, we've got actually a lot of a, a pretty significant overestimate. The rectangles that we've used to approximate the area under the curve are much larger than the actual area under the curve. Well, we can make that better if we use more subintervals. So, same curve, still looking at the same interval. This time I'm going to divide it up into four equal subintervals. Alright, if I'm looking at the interval from zero to two and I'm thinking about dividing that into four equal sections. The sections are going to look like that, and we can see that those endpoints for those intervals, the first endpoint would be one half, the next one is one, then we've got one and a half, and two. So on the interval from zero to one half, again, using the right endpoint of each interval, to approximate the volume, or excuse me, to approximate the velocity, I'm going to evaluate V of one half and multiply that by the length of that subinterval. So you think about how many units are there from zero to one half? How many units are there from one half to one? That's the width of each subinterval. Each of these is going to be a half. So V of one half will get multiplied by one half, and that will give us the approximate area. Let me make sure that I have the right one, and I don't. The, the approximate area. Take down, it didn't happen. for that rectangle and then I'll find, I'll find the approximate rectangle here and the approximate area of the rectangle here and finally the last one and then we're just going to pretend that those are actually rectangles So, on the interval from one half to one, the area of that rectangle is going to be the velocity evaluated at t equal one multiplied by the length of that interval of time, which would be one half. From one to three halves, We'll evaluate velocity at 3 halves and multiply that velocity by 1 half. 
and then on the interval from 3 halves to 2, we'll do the same thing. Velocity evaluated at 2, so plug 2 into the function, multiply that by the width of that interval, 1 half. So then the total displacement, or the estimate for the total displacement in this case, you go back and you actually work these problems, you should find 1 eighth for the first area, 1 half for the second area, 9 eighths for the third rectangle, and 2 for the area of the last rectangle. So total displacement then over this interval of time would be the sum 1 eighth plus 1 half plus 9 eighths plus 2. And if you find that sum, you'll find that that is 3.75, or as a fraction, 15 over 4 would be fine. Either one is okay with me. So that, that number, 15 fourths, would be the area of these four rectangles. Add it together. All right, now we see that um, this is still not a very good estimate for the area under the curve because we've got still a significant portion of those rectangles that are sticking up above the curve, so that rectangle areas are too large. But we've got less rectangle sticking up above the curve than we had when we looked at just two rectangles. So I can see with those two quick examples that the more subintervals we divide the interval from 0 to 2 up into, the better the estimate's going to be for using to, for finding the actual area under the curve.